three stints in the intensive care unit, intubation every single time, two different rehabilitation facilities in between those, and one final inpatient rehab floor in the hospital. Not for me, for my dad. That is where I have been for the last three months, trying to help out where I can. That's just on my dad's side. On my mom's side, scoliosis that uh, she has been battling. In the midst of all that, closing on a new house. My wife and I did. So that, my friends, is the very, very short version of where I've been. not sure I remember what I'm doing when it comes to this blogging thing or this upcoming poker thing but I do know that this cocktail is much needed and a much needed cheers to you guys for once again tuning in three months later in between videos didn't expect it to be that way but such is life cheers guys hello from the Thompson Hotel in San Antonio, Texas, that is their take on the spicy margarita, and that is damn good. That hits, as the kids say. Do they say that? I have no idea. What else is happening? Aside from all that, uh, let's see. The Lodge. The Lodge has expanded to San Antonio, and now we are the proud owners of not just one, but two card clubs, both in the state of Texas, Austin, and San Antonio. That's, that's here. I don't know where I'm pointing. Guys, this is my very first trip to the new card club. As of approximately one month ago, we bought out a card club that you might have heard me mention before because we actually played there before. It's called Rounders. Now it's not called Rounders, now it's called Lodge San Antonio. Hooray! Anyway, that is the good news. I'm very excited to go over to Lodge San Antonio to play some cards with some friendly faces. Tomorrow's a meetup game. Tonight, we're just gonna vibe because as mentioned, these past three months have not been all that enjoyable. In fact, it's been some of the toughest moments, the toughest three months perhaps of my life. And uh, I can really imagine how uh, my parents have felt about it. So sometimes, uh, sometimes poker and vlogging is very much going to take precedence for me in my life. Sometimes family and health concerns and things like that are going to take precedence. And it's tough to figure out how much should I uh, talk about on the channel? How much should I vlog? You know, I'm not gonna be vlogging from the hospital, but thankfully right now things are a bit more, they've chilled out a bit. So thankfully that gives me a chance. Come on down to San Antonio. I'm here for four nights. Treating myself to what appears to be a lovely place to stay, the Thompson Hotel. This is not sponsored by the Thompson Hotel. I'd never heard of it until a day ago when I booked it. Here we are, happy to be here. What you're about to see from Lodge San Antonio will be the first time that I myself am seeing it in person. So let's head over there after I enjoy this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna chill here for a little while, maybe take it in from the 20th floor up here, and then it'll be time to take in Lodge San Antonio for the first time ever. There's been the occasional surreal moment on this vlog, long time of vlog watchers. We've seen some developments since inception and here we are in card club numero dos. Lodge Card Club has expanded to a second location here in San Antonio. Shout out to the guys at Rounders who did an impeccable, awesome job uh, in building the card club that they started into the, I would say, premier place to play in San Antonio. 
and it's an honor to uh, take over operations from those guys. Um, Brad and I, we had not been to this location. We had been to the previous one. They moved into this building. So like I said, this is the first time I'm in, in here, but thankfully the uh, John Malkovich mural made it over from the previous location into this space. Now, this will be the uh, location for Lodge San Antonio for the time being. This is gonna be a temporary space. Eventually we're gonna move into a significantly larger space with significantly more poker tables to run significantly bigger tournaments and such. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, we've got this space with a full bar and a restaurant and we've got poker games. Now, I'm gonna hop in there. Games, as always in Texas, play bigger than advertised. How much bigger, we're gonna find out. But I'm hopping in with $2,500 in a 1-3 game, which I imagine will not play like a 1-3 game. I wasn't planning on including any hands from a 1-3 session, but sacrilege. Gotta include some hands from the first ever session. Not just any hands though, these are gonna be the very first three hands off of the deck that I played. In hand number one, action folds around to me, let's call it middle position, and we look down at the beautiful 6-4 offsuit. Did I come all the way from Michigan to San Antonio to fold 6-4 offsuit? No, I raise. I make it $15 to go. Action folds around to the blinds who both fold, which is a fantastic opportunity to do a little advertising. Go ahead and show down the 6-4 offsuit. Came to play, boys. Let's go. All right, second hand off of the deck, under the gun, raises it up to $15. There's one call and we look down at Pocket Kings. Perfect timing. Gonna go ahead and three bet this, of course. I make it $65 to go. The player on the button makes the cold call and the two players before me also make the call. So four ways to a flop comes down, jack four, deuce, two diamonds, one spade. Can't ask for too much better in a four-way pot, so when it checks over to me, we're firing. I go ahead and bet $85. Player on the button continues with a call, and the two other players get out of the way. So heads up now, queen of spades, second spade. Board getting pretty wet here, checking seems silly, let's not do that. Instead, let's go ahead and fire again. This time I bet $200. Player on the button thinks and decides to let it go. No tragedies here, things going well in the early going. For myself at the new card club, let's go ahead and move on to the third hand in which early position opens up to $15. We look down at 10, nine of clubs. Better believe we're in there. Two others make the call behind me, including the young Bradley Owen. Four ways to a flop that comes down, king eight, seven with two clubs. Oh my. Open ender plus flush draw, dream flop for the 10 nine of clubs. Brad checks it and the initial razor fires out for $35. We've got the absolute nut semi bluff hand here. Combo draw too powerful to just play passively. Let's raise. I make it $110 to go. We see one fold before Brad does not fold. He goes ahead and cold calls here. Pretty interesting. And things get even more interesting when the initial razor goes ahead and jams all in that total amounts to five hundred and one dollars not too sure what we've got ourselves into here but i do know and i'm quite sure that folding is gonna be out of the question with this hand can't say i love brad cold calling in there behind me but as mentioned hand way too pretty to fold i make the call and brad thinks about it before deciding to fold the ace five of clubs which is good news bad news bad news that he's got two of our clubs that we need to improve with but very good news that we get a dominating flush draw out of this hand and we're now heads up all of our outs are now live versus my opponent's ace king the turn is a brick but the river is a beautiful off suit six and that my friends is the nuts that new card club run good feels good no, it feels great. You'd love to see it. Now, I wish I could say that this sort of thing just continued for the next four hours or what have you, but you must lose some hands, especially when you're playing hands such as 6-4 off suit. Bleed a decent chunk of the profit back into the game, but things end on the good side for this nice little 1-3 session. All right, guys, the uh, first ever official session for yours truly here at Lodge San Antonio is a wrap. 1-3, $2,500 max buy-in, but that's only to start the game. It's match the stack after that. I forgot to mention that earlier. There's not too many low stakes games around these parts. There is the one, two, 300 cap. After that, it's all match the stack. And, uh, you know, games can get spicy when there's tons of straddles going left and right, etc. Get into this game for $2,500 and we cash out $2,938 for 
a $438 profit. This is just a warm up for a full weekend ahead. We got the meetup game, a full day of meetup game tomorrow. I'm gonna go back to the hotel, get some sleep, then it's back here for who knows how many hours and uh, possibly some higher stakes action later this weekend. All right, guys, we've had a couple of fun days here at the Finest Card Club in all of San Antonio. Uh, let's see, on the first day we played the 1-3 and uh, I won about $450. The second day I played a $300 tournament and won $0, no, I lost $300. And then after that hopped into the four card action, I played the 1-2-5 PLO and we profited. 2,000 some odd dollars in that thing. So we're off to a lovely start here at Lodge San Antonio, but, and this is a big but, but all of our hard work could very easily be wiped out today because today is the main event, so to speak. Uh, today is going to be a 1025, probably straddles, no limit hold'em game featuring and hosted by the legendary Big Daddy Chaz, a very lovable character here in San Antonio. That game goes twice a week, and today, yours truly is hopping in there. So, significantly stepping it up in stakes here today. No more of this 1-3, no more of this 1-2-5. 10, 25, I'm gonna guess probably 50, at least sometimes. Gonna buy in for $5,000, maybe. Uh, I'm gonna see what other people are buying in for, and uh, we're gonna go from there. So, strap in, time to play some proper stakes here Lodge San Antonio. When I said earlier that the $50 straddle will likely be on, that was foolish. This is Texas, my friends. Of course, the $50 straddle is gonna be on basically all the time, and it's gonna go up from there. 100 will be on a lot, sometimes the $200 straddle. So 5, 10, 25, 50, sometimes 100. We got $10,000 worth of chips. We got cash beyond that. We're gonna start with five of it on the table. Let's get locked in. Early on in this session, again, the $50 straddle is on. We see a raise out of the cutoff to $150. Button comes in with a three bet up to $800, and we look down at pocket jacks in the big blind. This is one of those spots in poker where none of the options feel all that great. Folding feels way too tight, especially in Texas. Raising seems aggressive with just jacks. Cold calling out of position never feels great, but I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know. I decide to go with the cold call. Chuck in the 800 bucks. Initial raiser out of the cutoff makes the call as well. So three ways to a flop. It comes down nine, eight, five with two spades. We got ourselves the over pair here. Aside from flopping a set, this is often as good as it's gonna get. I check it, play on the cutoff checks and the button slides out a continuation bet of $1,000. Can't fold now. Could definitely see raising for protection or we could go with the call. I'm gonna go with the call, see what the cutoff decides to do. That player, gets out of the way. So down to heads up now, as we see an offsuit eight on the turn. That should not change anything in a three bet pot here too often. If we're ahead pre-flop, we're still gonna be ahead here. And as my opponent jams the rest in, $2,800. Not a lovely spot to be in that we find ourselves in the early going of this session. Getting a very good price now to see a river card and get to showdown $2,800 here. It's only around a 60% pot size wager. Just getting way too good of a price here with an over pair. And it's Texas after all. I don't know any of these guys' style, but I do know they live in Texas. So all that is going to add up to a call with the Jacks. We're chucking the $2,800. My opponent asks if we want to go once or twice. Twice is fine by me. And my opponent delivers the bad news. He says he's got pocket kings. We're cooked here in the early going and we need some help. Two outer with two pulls of the deck. Does not come on the first run and does not come on the second run. This is not where we want to be starting off with these big stakes, wiping out all of the previous day's profit in one hand, the very early going of this session. <sighs> okay, well, nothing left to do but to pick up the pieces and to reload. We buy in for another $5,000, try and shake it off. And as we do so, we look down at the ace jack off suit in middle position. Go ahead, raise this up to 150 bucks and only the player in the small blind makes the call. So heads up to flop, it comes down 10, nine, deuce, rainbow. No connection there. My opponent checks, just gonna check this one back. 
Turn is a welcome sight though. It's the Jack of Clubs. Second club on board, board very wet here. So when he checks it over to me, not gonna go for the down bet. Instead, I'm gonna bet $250, which my opponent calls. River is certainly not my favorite card, the King of Clubs, and I announce as such when my opponent checks it over to me. Just decide to check this one back. He doesn't give any indication as to having too much of a hand, so I roll my hand over and it is good. According to my math, we only need about 12 more of these hands to get back to even. All right, an odd instance here where there's no straddle line and we open up the queen jack offsuit to $75. Only the player in the big blind makes the call. Heads up to nine, five, deuce, all hearts. We don't have any of those hearts. Checks it over me, I just decide to check it back. Turn three of hearts, we have even less of a hand now. Opponent checks it though, and since I didn't bet on the flop, I'm probably not gonna be betting too many flushes here on the turn. Just gonna be checking my nothing here in this spot as well. River brings an offsuit ace, and my opponent checks a third time. Do we wanna show down queen high on a four flush board? Probably not. Let's go ahead, fire a small bet out there, which is probably better than just checking it down. Fire $75 and my opponent snap folds. So a welcome sight there. Uh, only 11 and a half hands, I would say, now to get back to even. In this next one, there's an early position raise to $125, and there's one call before we look down at our favorite hand, Pocket Jacks. What could go wrong? Let's find out. Let's three bet it up to $525 out of the cutoff spot, and we see both players make the fold. What a lovely hand. It's so easy to play, Pocket Jacks. Drag this one in too. We find another pocket pair in the cutoff spot one orbit later when we look down at pocket fours and raise this up to $150 over the $50 straddle. Brad calls on the button before Ethan, who is a regular on the Lodge Austin stream. He's putting in the three bet this time up to $750 out of the small blind. The big blind makes the cold call, which gives us a lovely little price here to continue with our pocket fours. I make the call and Brad folds on the button. So three ways to a flop. Comes down 10 6 6 with two hearts. Ethan checks, putting the big blind checks. I'm just gonna check this one back. It's not a terrible flop, but having an under pair on a paired board doesn't give us a whole lot of equity when we do get called if we were to stab here. Maybe if we're heads up, we can take a stab at three ways, just decide to check this one back. Turns an offsuit deuce, and this time Ethan bets out for $900. Playing the big blind folds. I think Ethan can take this delayed C bet route with a variety of holdings such as over pairs. And even if he's got two overs, he's certainly not dead. Gonna be tough for us to hang on if he barrels river. So just decide to give him a little bit of credit here. Decide to let the fours go and slide on back further into Stuckville. Every dealer change in this game sees a $50 double board PLO bomb pot, very Texas style. And this turns out to be a significant one for sure. We get dealt the King King 5-3 and the two flops get dealt, giving us middle set on one board and just the over pair pocket kings on the second board. But the second nuts and not too much else going on on the other board i decide to check it and action checks all the way through turns a nine of diamonds on top and four spades on bottom so after the flops check through i really feel like my set of kings is good on that board I feel like we have no hopes to win the top board but if we do split this pot we're going to be profiting anyway so i decide to fire out a bet of 200 dollars. two players make the call so we're looking for a pretty good card here on the board where we have a set and are giving up hope on the top board. We improved to King's full with a river seven on the bottom board. Top board, as mentioned, we're almost certainly losing that one. But I think I'm getting half of this pot and with two players out there, I'm gonna go for some value. Decide to fire $700 and the first opponent goes ahead and folds before Ethan decides to pot it. There's a couple of unlikely disaster scenarios. If he somehow happens to have pocket sevens here, that's pretty brutal. Only other way we lose that bottom board is if he has pocket aces, but he would have had to check through the flop in that scenario. There's tons of other full houses available. A7, King, 7, 7, 4. Very likely that he might have a straight on the top and a worse full house on the bottom. I don't think we're gonna fold here. Expect to chop a lot of the time and we'll still be profiting when that happens. So I go ahead, announce the ah whatever, and chuck in the call. And Ethan gives the reaction, which indicates that he doesn't love it. Says it's probably a bad play. Before rolling over, pocket aces. That is one of the disaster scenarios. Unbelievable. Checks it back with the top set on the flop. He himself didn't have too much going on the other board, which I suppose makes sense to go ahead and slow play that one. But oh man, not a good situation. Lose $4,000 in this hand. And that's gonna leave us somewhere around 9K so far on the day, sending me back to the box for some additional reload monies. 
Okay, as mentioned, we're back in this game, back in the mix. Action folds around to me in the $50 straddle, looking down at Queen Jack off suit. Gonna go ahead and raise this up to $200. Yuchan is in the $100 double straddle. He makes the call. So the two of us go heads up to a flop of 10, five deuce with two hearts. Two overs plus two back doors. We don't wanna go into check call mode here. We want to start firing, fire out for $200 and he makes the call. Aside from directly improving to a pair, if given the option, we would probably choose the nine of hearts to come out on the turn. And that's what we see here. Once again, not gonna go into check call mode, gonna keep my foot on the gas and keep the aggression in our corner. Fire out for not a large bet, $250, think that's fine. Gives us a good price to continue, leaves open the door to go for some bigger sizings on the river if we need to bluff. So $250 it is, and Yuchan not unexpectedly agrees to that price, makes the call. River's pretty interesting, it's an offsuit jack, and it's just a debate between whether we want to get the showdown now, or if there's value to be gotten and if there is, what sizing can we choose here? I decided to fire out for value, I bet $400, trying to squeak out some value versus some small and middling pairs, as well as some flop top pairs. Yuchan's having none of that though. He's not gonna be my huckleberry and instead he decides to raise up to $1,600. This might look like a gross spot, but did I mention that I'm stuck $9,000? Not just that, but we've got ourselves some pretty good blockers here to the value hands. Blocking straights, blocking flushes, blocking two pairs, having removal to all of the strongest hands. And not only that, but Yushan is a total gangster. He can do anything at any time. He's got all the gears, he's got all the tricks. So I don't waste too much time, chuck in the call, toss in the $1,600, and we get shown the 9-8 off suit with one heart for himself to speak of, which, as you can see, is probably a pretty good candidate as well with all of the above factors going on in his hand too. So this one definitely feels good. We needed to claw a little bit back here, try and swing the momentum in our favor. That hasn't been the case so far. All right, stand-up game is on as if there's not enough action in this game. Whoever's the last to win a hand has to pay $1,000 as an ante into the next pot following the stand-up game. We don't want to do that. So when we look down at the king six of clubs from early position, let's go ahead and raise it up to $200. Players in the small blind and the big blind make the call. Three ways to king Jack three rainbow, two checks over to me. Could certainly find some checkbacks here with a weak kicker, but I think with a stand-up game on, that leads me more towards firing a C-bet. I do so for 250 bucks. Player in the small blind folds, and the player in the big blind makes the call. Turns a pretty looking sight. It's the king of spades, second spade, which upgrades us to trips, makes our kicker a little bit less relevant. More likely to have the only king now. Player in the big blind checks, we're gonna fire a bet. No reason to pot control, I don't think, with trips. This time I fire out for $400, and my opponent makes the call once again. River is another good looking site. It's an offsuit three, which upgrades us once again to a full house now. Playing the big line checks over to me one more time. We're definitely going to be ramping up our sizing now. If we have a hand like queen 10 or ace queen or ace 10 or 10 nine, we don't want to be giving too good of a price with our bluffs. We don't want to make it too easy on them. So when we have the value hands, I think we want to go big as well. And I decide on a sizing of $1,200, which sends my opponent into the tank. When he doesn't snap call, that means we're not chopping. And obviously we're hoping for a call here, which my opponent eventually does make. Very good news here. $1,200 river bet plus another thousand or so on previous streets. Trying to claw our way back to even or as close as we can get. Avoid the pain in this round of the stand-up game as well. Not just the 50, not just the 100, but the $200 straddle is on in this hand. Action folds over to me in the small blind. There's been a few instances of Yuchan on my direct left not making it easy on me. And so when I look down at the ace king, I decided to limp because he's been punishing me every time I do this. Right on cue, Yushan raises it up to $800. That's exactly what we want to see. Gives us an opportunity to go for the old limp three bet. We're re-raising this up to $2,400 and undeterred, Yushan makes the call. So heads up to a flop out of position versus a good player. Looking for some help, and thankfully we find it on the Ace-7-4 rainbow flop. Definitely on the dry side. Obviously we're gonna be C-betting, but we don't need to go too big here. In a four bet pot, somewhere around $5,000 in the middle already. Let's try to keep his full range in there. Decide on a sizing of $900, just a little bit under 20% pot. Yushan makes the call, and we see the King of Clubs, second club on the turn. 
Feels like we got a hammerlock on this hand. Definitely want to keep our foot on the gas, I think. Maybe there's some benefit to slowing down, going for the trap and slow playing here. But we definitely want to play for stacks. Don't think he's going to be able to fold an ace all that often. Some additional draws available now. Not going to get tricky here. I decided to fire another bet, $2,000 this time. Again, it's not that big of a bet in consideration to the pot size. But in the end, that amount ends up getting the job done. And Yushan wants to rabbit hunt here. Do so after I begin dragging in this pot. And the river is another ace, which gives us the nuts. Pretty quickly, Yushan asked me what I have. I go ahead and tell him that I would have had the nuts on the river there. Nice guy. It's kind of funny. I've won a lot of significant pots versus Yushan, even though he is no easy customer. That is for sure. And even with him being on my direct left, I've had an okay time with him in this game. Just thanks to the card distributions. And then with everybody else, uh, they've been getting my money. $200 straddle on exactly one orbit later and exactly same thing happens as before. Action folds around to me and this time we look down at pocket fives, decide to limp it in here versus Yushan and once again pumps it up to $800. I'm not going to go for the limp three bet in this scenario. Too many tough boards and flops and such that are going to be tough to navigate with the pocket fives. Just decide to make the call and go heads up to a flop. Flop goes down ace, deuce, deuce, rainbow. Of course, it's not my favorite board. Check it and he fires out for $400. Little under 25% pot bet. Sure, we can fold. We just have pocket fives on an ace high board. But think of all the other hands that he can do this with other than an ace in his holdings. King, queen, queen, jack, 10, nine suited, seven, six suited, all sorts of holdings. Granted, we are out of position. Always tough to navigate when that's the case. But you know what's not tough to navigate? When you turn a full house. I make the call and the turn is a five. Check it over to him. And now we are praying that he empties the clip here, which he does not decide to do. Checks it back on the turn very sadly. River is a king, which gives us an interesting decision point. If both players have ace they're going to be chopping this pot. But if Yushan happens to have a king, such as king queen, king jack, don't think he's going to go for value on this river, which will allow him to check back if we decide to check it over to him. I feel like he's pretty capped here. And if I have a bluffing hand, maybe we want to go bigger, try and fold him off of those hands, try and fold him off of those king queen type hands on the river, turn some pair into a bluff in those kinds of instances. So once again, we got our value hand. We don't want to go too small. Decide to fire out here for $1,300. Looking for a call, looking to claw back some of the losses as has been the theme of the session so far. And eventually Yushan does make the call. We roll over the pocket fives. I think he's probably a little bit surprised and annoyed. I wouldn't blame him to see that hand. I've had the better hand versus Yushan each time here so far. That's the case once again, and we drag this pot in. Moving right along here is an early position raised to $200 over the $50 straddle. We look down at ace king. Let's three bet that. What do you guys say? I make it $700 to go. Player in the straddle puts in the cold call and the early position player folds. A bit unexpected of a formation, but maybe not for Texas. And here we are. Heads up to seven, six deuce rainbow. Player in the straddle checks. I'm going to see bet here. Can do so for value, I think. I bet $450 and that player makes the call. Turns the queen of diamonds, second diamond. And now my opponent hops out of flow and bets $800. Definitely a weird spot here. Wouldn't really expect him to continue on flops with a queen all too often. Maybe ace queen, we got some removal to that though. King queens, do those continue on the flop? Not too often I would think. We also got some removal to that. Lots of draws available now, some middling straights, some flushes. We'd like to see another card here and see what happens, dealer. So I chuck out the 800 bucks and we go to a river card, which is an offsuit three. My opponent bets $1,000 now, and I don't know what's going on. Would he take this line with a seven, firing on a queen and across multiple streets? Seems quite unlikely. Would he do so with pocket eights, nines, tens, jacks? Also seems a little bit unlikely to fire out when a queen hits. Things get more interesting as my opponent shows me a king. Now, I have no idea what's going on. That's gonna eliminate the diamond draws when he shows me the king of hearts. King seven of hearts, I guess that's possible. Possible. Has to cold call with that pre-flop. Pocket kings? Don't think so. Cold calling. Gotta find a four bet there. Some bluffs that we beat. King jack suited. King ten suited. Maybe the same hand? Some ace kings, perhaps? He tells me to save my money. I don't know. I don't know if I can believe these guys. I'm too perplexed. I want to see what's going on here. Here's the $1,000. I got myself ace high and he's got himself the king queen. Turns the three outer. Gives us the speech play. Gets paid off. Guess he was being honest at the end of the day there. Clearly showing some rust on my part because as I am looking over this hand in hindsight, it's crazy to me that I didn't even once consider raising on the river after he shows me the king. And he clearly doesn't have the nuts here. He's literally capped to king queen. And somehow, as mentioned, raising never even entered my mind. Clearly not my A game today. 
Move it in the wrong direction, and in this hand, we open pocket fives to $300 from under the gun. Player on the button makes the call before the player in the straddle. Three bets, no small three bet, $1,500. I am in absolutely no mood to fold a pocket pair pre-flop, not when we can flop sets. I make the call and the player on the button makes the call as well. So a casual $4,500 in the middle that I would love to add to my stack. But unfortunately, the flop comes down ace, seven, seven. Straddle checks, I check. Player on the button checks as well. Turn is really annoying as it's another ace which counterfeits our two pair. Currently playing five high at this point. Straddler checks. I think he's gonna have plenty of traps here. Doesn't seem like a great spot to try and bluff. I check it and player on the button checks as well. River's a king. Player on the straddle checks a third time. Maybe there's some, some world where we can chop this thing. We're playing the board. Aces and sevens with a king kicker. Maybe we can stab on a four or a three or a two because we would have five high kicker. Just decided to check this back. Three ways, button checks as well. And and this player in the straddle is going to win it with his pocket jacks. Torch the 1500 in that spot. Deep, deep into Stuckville now. Somewhere around 13 or 14,000 deep into Stuckville. And not only that, but we're down to heads up in this round of the stand up game. Heads up between myself and Big Daddy Chaz. And when you're heads up, you need to win a hand before that other player does, or else, as mentioned, a thousand dollar penalty getting tossed into the next pot. Thankfully, a welcome sight as we look down at ace-queen off suit in early position. With the $100 straddle on, I go ahead and raise this up to $300. There's two or three calls before action over to Big Daddy Chaz in the $50 straddle, who puts in the three bet. Bumps this up to $2,200. Do I have some concern in this spot? Yes, it's just ace-queen off suit, but think about the dynamics here. We're heads up versus the only other guy with a button in front of him in the knit game. It's Big Daddy Chaz and he's no knit. There's an extra thousand dollars that you avoid paying if you can win this hand. And it's ace queen. We'll be in trouble sometimes, but so rarely we'll be dead. Flipping or better a lot of the time. So even though I think we've got zero fold equity in this spot, I think our hand is forced. We're going to go ahead. We're going to four bet jam this thing for somewhere around $5,000. Leave this one up to the poker gods. Stick it in there. The players in between myself and Chaz get out of the way. And Big Daddy Chaz, as expected, makes the call. I show him what I got. And he delivers some not so good news. Telling me that he's got ace king. Somehow has us pipped as it gets down to the last two players in the stand-up game. Gonna need some help here on this board. And the board flops out an ace and a king. I think I can pretty confidently say with the benefit of hindsight that after taking three months off and basically directly jumping into a 10, 25, 50, 100 game, Maybe not the brightest ideas. And uh, sometimes your bad ideas in poker can be expensive lessons. This one is definitely an expensive one. $20,000. One of, if not the biggest loss. I don't know, I'm not sure here on the blog. Good news, those funds are now distributed amongst Lodge San Antonio players. Enjoy the funds you guys down there in that player pool. Definitely wanna try and be posting a little to a lot more frequently here on YouTube gonna depend on uh, non-poker life, of course. I did post a couple of updates over the past few months on Twitter and Instagram and here on the community tab on YouTube and got a lot of awesome messages uh, of support and well regards. And I know there's a lot of people that are tuning into these videos that have gone through something similar in their family. So if, uh, if that's the case and you wanna share, feel free to leave it down below in the comments. Uh, I will be reading those and uh, hope you guys are all doing well. Speaking of Twitter and Instagram, uh, I did share one other thing along the way. As mentioned, not that much live poker, but playing a decent amount online in the past few months. And some of that play included the WSOP Online Circuit Series, in which yours truly bought into a tournament for $100 and cashed out for over $16,000, securing my first ever WSOP Online Circuit Ring. So, Figured I would share that news here as well and end this video on a high note. <laughs>